Kathy for that. But we're going to head into our Zoom room. Uh, we're going to check with uh, Ray Taposnia. He is the executive director of the Guam Housing and Urban Renewal Authority. And, you know, before we get into uh, mortgage relief, uh, the mortgage relief program, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, holiday headlines. And um, Ross, good morning, Ray. Good morning, Ray. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. How about you? Uh, never better. Never better. <laughs> and so, you know, you guys, um, uh, you and your staff, you guys did uh, the Ross, and it's actually, I think, the second time uh, you guys have actually done this program. It started uh, last year, and if you could just share some of the so good, some of the good things you guys are doing over at Gura and giving back okay, to the, the community. Is one of our many programs. It's the Resident Opportunity and Self Sufficiency. Uh, program basically it's intended to link our elderly residents and persons with disabilities with services um, available in the community mm -hmm. um, what we did last year through our Ross program is we reached out to the very schools and had them, uh, host a Christmas dinner uh, at the various developments um, and uh, Christmas caroling but uh, Obviously, we're not able to do the same thing this year because of the pandemic. So what we did is we hosted a or we uh, at, requested for an art project where they the students, with the help of their parents, can um, can uh, uh, basically uh, design a Christmas card or uh, or a Christmas ornament for our elderly residents. And we were surprised by the outpouring of support because we received um, gift baskets. Uh, I mean, we had our conference room full of gifts, Christmas gifts for our elderly residents um, I th several days in a row. I mean, we would unload everything and and then uh, deliver it to our 119 uh, 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 elderly residents. And then the following day, our conference room would be full of donations once again. So uh, this went on for a few days. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, you know, I, I want to go ahead and mention the schools that participated because yeah. it's really important. Uh, Agani Heights Elementary, BP Carbolito, CL Titano, um, Maria Ujola Elementary School, M Maritza Martyrs Memorial School, Amy Lujan, and Telefofo Elementary, and also Marshall Sablan Elementary School. Uh, they worked in collaboration with the Agate Mayors uh, and other NGOs. But yeah, I mean, we were really, really um, delighted with the outpouring of support. And uh, I'm sure the elderly residents and our pers and persons with disabilities within our public housing programs were, were really pleased. Uh, so we wanna just uh, say thank you to everybody. And I think not only, you know, uh, kudos to the, the the children that participated and the community support that you guys received, but also you know good work of uh, your employees um, uh, giving back to the community and taking their time to go out there, especially when you think about um, you know the pandemic and the precautions that you have to take. Absolutely, Sabrina, and you know I'm so blessed uh, to lead or be the captain of the ship. I walked in here and we had some challenges before us, but I think we've turned things around and uh, the housing authority um, is uh, doing very well, um, I have to say. And, uh, uh, but it, you know, I couldn't have done it without the 102 employees that, uh, that follow my lead. I mean, we're just, uh, yeah, I come to work every day simply because, yeah, um, because I don't consider this a job. It's really a passion. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, speaking of uh, your job, though, uh, I wanted to talk about the uh, mortgage relief program uh, th and the funding that Gore received and just what is the overall status uh, of this program? Well, you know, unfortunately, we've taken a, a big hit regarding uh, the, some of the delays. And if I can just uh, explain why there are delays. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Congress passed uh, a number of pandemic relief programs to include the PUA, the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance, and, and other programs. And I don't think there was a lot of consideration in terms of whether some of these programs uh, based on federal regs are going to end up 
basically canceling each other out or disqualifying each other. And so you have the POA checks that were uh, dished out over the last few months and then the mortgage relief that Congress uh, passed and that was given to Gura to administer. We um, contracted with the Guam Housing Corporation to actually uh, do the administrative work. And what we're start, what we've seen, um, and again, we have to follow federal regs, is in many instances, um, uh, the applicant ends up being ineligible because they are no longer income qualified because of the PUA uh, checks that they're receiving. Uh, so in totality, I think 122 applications came in. Uh, 13 have already been forwarded from by the Guam Housing Corp to us and when we sat down with our federal partners and uh, and reviewed them uh, for final approval uh, seven of them are already deemed ineligible of the 13 and so we're we've been back and forth with with HUD to try and uh, request for waivers it, you know it, it it's we know them 31 <laughs> have been affected by COVID, but because they're receiving uh, PUA assistance, it, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me that uh, you may no longer be eligible for other uh, pandemic uh, assistance programs such as mortgage relief. So, uh, you know, it's it's not final, but it, uh, but there are challenges that we're that we're struggling with. And I think if we could just kind of take this back um, uh, first, uh, the the mortgage relief program, um, this is f for people that uh, lost a job, right? That's the, one of the eligibility uh, requirements. And because uh, they received PUA, because they lost their job, that makes them ineligible, at least as far as you know at this point. Correct. Well, that's yeah. That's really um, that's really an, uh, unfortunate. Is that something that's just uh, unique to Guam, or is this a problem that's having that that's a, across the country that that, that have this program? It, I would presume it's nationwide, simply because the federal regs apply to every state and mm -hmm. territory uh, equally. And so, yeah, I mean, there's uh, there's pandemic unemployment assistance that's given out to every state, and I'm sure uh, those uh, th that income is factored into uh, whether you're eligible or not. And and you know, unfortunately, on Guam, we have uh, multi generational um, households where three or four uh, uh, are are working, and all of them are unfortunately receiving PUA so we have to f calculate all four and then it kicks them above the uh, income threshold and then they end up being ineligible so uh, that's the struggles we're facing um, so th the honest truth is today we've not been able to clear a single uh, mortgage relief application simply because the federal regs are just um, because we have to follow the federal regs and it, it it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But if I were to violate it, uh, I end up having to repay it. Mm -hmm. uh, just a second, Ray. Um, we, we have to cut out of our TV broadcast. So everybody that's watching us on KUAM television, uh, please join us over at 93.9 The Breeze, or you can watch our stream on Facebook. Uh, thanks for watching. Good morning, everybody. We are back. We have with us Ray Taposnia, the Executive Director of the Guam Housing and Urban Renewal Authority, and we are talking about some of the issues uh, that uh, Gora and uh, the Guam Housing Corporation are confronted with when it comes to the uh, COVID-19 mortgage relief program. Uh, Ray, um, you, you mentioned that n no one has been approved yet, and you've been having conversations uh, with the federal government. Have they given you any sort of uh, feedback in terms of when they may um issue a, a decision on whether or not they're going to let this go go through well you know I, i'm pretty sure we're not, we're, we may not be the only one asking for a waiver but as it stands the waivers have not been granted and um 
you know, my position is, or the, the request we put on the table is, if you are affected by COVID, if you lost your job or you had a reduction in hours, then certainly you should be able to qualify for mortgage relief. But uh, that's not their, that doesn't seem to be the position of uh, our federal partners. Basically their position is, well, you you received PUA, then sh that perhaps should have been applied towards getting you caught up on your mortgage. And, you know, um, that's kind of the the way the discussions have been going. Again, nothing said in concrete. I'm just saying to, as of today, uh, we've not been able to get any, um, uh, we've not been able to provide any good news to any of the 122 applicants that have submitted uh, their um, request for mortgage relief. Mm -hmm. So uh, who would be, I guess, eligible for this program? If, if people that, uh, if their employment was affected, if this is what this was specifically uh, set up for, uh, who well, would be eligible for this program? You know, I, we, we also, um, and I, I just, I, I haven't seen the details, but I know Congress just passed uh, uh, something the other day that uh, would give Guam a lot of money for rent relief. We believe the rent relief would be more successful simply because uh, most most of the folks that are um, that would be applying for rent would not have because you know take into uh, you have to consider the fact that based on federal regs we have to consider your 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 um, your assets as well mm -hmm. and if you have a five hundred thousand dollar house and you lost your job due to COVID uh, more than likely you would not be uh, income eligible uh, simply because the federal regs would uh, prohibit it but if you are just renting then you more than likely don't have the asset that would uh, disqualify you and so we believe with Congress's um, recent uh, passage of uh, rent relief we're probably going to have a lot more success. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm crossing my fingers, but that, that's kind of my take on that. Mm -hmm. Have you been uh, able to maybe discuss these concerns with uh, the congressman? Uh, unfortunately, no. <laughs> okay. I, I, he, you know, he, he and I can talk, but uh, he's not as accessible as I would like. Right. Um, is can people still apply though uh, that that think that they may be eligible for the program? Oh, absolutely. Um, there's, um, uh, you know, the Guam Housing Corporation is still accepting applications, and I think it'll go on for several more weeks. Um, so, no, I, I don't. I think that there's a checklist, uh, and I don't. Uh, my apologies, I don't have it in front of me. But there's a checklist that they would pick up, and you can just review that checklist and determine whether you're eligible or not, and then submit your application. They go through the uh, the process of reviewing the application, then forward it to us for final approval. Mm -hmm. I know you said that you were unsuccessful with uh, speaking with the, the congressman. What about um, uh, the Guam legislature or the, the governor's office to see if, if they can help uh, try and clear uh, this up? It's been communication with the governor's office, with the governor, in fact, regarding the mortgage relief. She's gravely concerned uh, of the way things have gone, but she also recognizes that uh, federal regulations have to be uh, complied with. And if we deviate from that, then it, similar to PUA, you end up having to, uh, somebody has to pay that back. So, um, you know, I'm hope, you know, one of the things I had suggested publicly in one of my press releases is perhaps Congress can pass a, uh, pass legislation that would do away with some of these uh, regulations rather than just passing a bill after bill after bill and some of them are technically canceling each other out because there's you know there's not a lot of thought as to whether pool uh, income would have uh, would deem you ineligible for mortgage relief um, so that's my suggestion to congress um, why don't you pass legislation that would do away with some of these stringent rules and maybe we could uh, 
expedite some of these um, mortgage relief and rent relief uh, rather than having to uh, give out bad news that you're ineligible simply because you know your your assets are above the threshold or your PUA payments are above the threshold. Yeah, it kind of makes you wonder if uh, if it's impacting this particular program, how many other federal assistance programs that it could have uh, an impact on and make people ineligible uh, for. So, um, was there was there anything else, um, Ray? Any other assistance programs uh, that that you're working on or? Well. You know, it, it, since you asked, I mean, uh, e even in light of the pandemic, uh, GURA continues to do what uh, what it's mandated to do. And, you know, I, I'm just really excited because the the Sinahania Central Arts Hall is uh, continue. The work is ongoing. That's a $895,000 project. Um, and it's the first for Gura to uh, of its kind that Gura has embarked on. We have the Women's Treatment Center in Tizen that we were just pending a the comp or the approval of the building permit, and then we can break ground. I'm hoping to do that within uh, by early part of next year. That's a 2.3 million dollar project, and uh, again, just it's just pending DPW review on the uh, building permit. And then the Umatic baseball field project is, <clears throat> we just laid the, <clears throat> excuse me, the foundation for the dugouts. So work is ongoing there. That's uh, that's a uh, uh, $806,000 project. Um, and we hope to complete that shortly. And then you have the Mong Mong Totu Maiti Community Center. Uh, what we're similar to what you see in Sinahanya, we're gonna put a, a, a hat on top of the basketball court and then renovate the basketball court. And then the Inarahan basketball court, we will con uh, commence construction shortly. The Sinahanya fire station project, uh, the the um, request for proposal for the A&E design is supposed to be advertised <coughs> today. So we hope to get uh, firms bid on that or submit proposals to design the, <coughs> the fire station, excuse me. And then finally, the uh, iLearn Academy Charter School, that's a $12 million project. Uh, we got approval from HUD uh, for the $12 million. I, I'm sorry, it's, it's a $32 million project. Gura's share is $12 million and HUD just approved it a couple of weeks ago. So um, we've partnered with iLearn uh, to do this and uh, it's a 900 packs charter school. Uh, we have some challenges. Um, that's my understanding uh, with regard to the zoning. And we're working with the Guam legislature, the GLUC and the governor's office to see how we can, um, how we can expedite that process uh, because uh, we have to break ground on January 15th. It's an 18 month construction project in order for us to uh, open by uh, school year 2022. If we don't meet, if if we're late on the con on breaking ground uh, on the construction, we may have to push the project. You know, it, it's not like any other project; it's a school, so mm -hmm. schools open typically around August of every year. So we would have to push it back an entire school year, and that would be unfortunate. So uh, we're working very closely with with everybody to see how we can. Uh, facilitate the approval of the a zone change so that the charter school can uh, construction can commence all right uh, re just real quickly I, I wanted to ask about a uh, uh, guma dot uh, and whether or not uh, the residents there were in line for vaccinations are in line for I'm sorry vaccinations the the elderly community over guma tranquilla dot you know I I haven't heard I would uh, presume that they would be uh, coming up on the priority list fairly soon. The, the average resident is about 65 years old down there. Uh, some of them have underlying health conditions. So I would uh, assume that uh, that uh, that they would be um, one of the priorities and I will follow up with public health to see and get back to you. Oh, okay. All right. Well, well, thank you so much, Ray. We've got to go to the superintendent. Appreciate your time and uh, Merry Christmas to you and uh, the rest of the staff over at Gora. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Free. And to everyone at KUAM. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Um, 
that was interesting with the, the issues with the uh, mortgage uh, relief program and how uh, people who had applied, it kind of cancels you out if you received PUA, but you heard from Ray, he's uh, working on that and hopefully uh, we can see some resolution to that problem, which uh, you'd think that it's not just